hi all hope all is well on today's episode of adventures in droning we've been tasked to spray sugarcane um, so just north of Bundaberg there's a 38 hectare block that we've been tasked to actually spray um, now we're up at the crack of dawn we had a uh, an early morning plover check so the chicks are still alive um, the mom and pa plover are still alive as well as you can see from the footage here extremely dark at this hour in the morning um, five o'clock is not a bad time to start obviously but this time of the year it's a bit darker we um, immediately went over and started to fill up with water 38 hectares at 30 litres a hectare worked out to be about 1200 litres of fluid that we needed so the first thing we obviously did was went and filled up with water um, obviously um, that's our mixing tank there that you can see or maybe not so obvious um, but yeah it's a good thing to actually secure it all down that's why we put the caps back on you can see here just as the sun's starting to poke up basically it was an amazing morning this morning very clear skies fair bit of dew on the ground as well um, and the vision of what we got to see was just spectacular um, the cameras can't even capture the magic of what we we're fortunate enough to see um, so you can see here these are the blocks that we're doing basically we break them into manageable pieces um, so um, one of the reasons we get up so early is so that we can spray before the wind gets up um, you can see that we're up against some of the houses and that there so it's important that we limit our spray drift as much as possible see the lights there on the front of the drone that's so we can do night ops obviously you have to have a an instrument they call it basically certification certification from CASA to operate at night technically we are operating in civil dawn um, so as that's the case it's just before the sun rises it was required that we operate using the night instrument see how spectacular it is it's just beautiful this time of the morning so we chose a really good spot to operate so we're well out of the cam again it's one of the benefits of operating with the drones is you can actually get out of the cam you don't need to be in it you shouldn't be in it anywhere near it you should be well out of the cam that's the whole idea of owning the drones and being fortunate enough to operate them um, so we operated um, to the east of the field and that way we stayed well out of it See here some more footage of the sun coming up it's always spectacular um, you can see here the routes of the drone so they are the routes that the drone was actually taking um, so it's an east to west routing um, and the idea is we navigate the drone in so we use guide points to get the drone in um, to that section of the job that we require spraying and then as the drone finishes spraying it actually is guided out using guide points as well um, that way we can manage um, any obstacles that are in the field. Um, it's also important to get the heights right as well because obviously the sugar cane is quite high um, and if you're not careful, the drone will actually drop down the side of the sugar cane and can impact the cane. So one of the first things we like to do is actually measure the cane to make sure that um, the drone never drops below that height. Uh, so you can see here Luke's manhandling the drone. Um, the idea of that is there's a sensor inside of it and sometimes it plays up a little bit so it needs a bit of a rattle um, to get it to, to read the correct level. Um, so what we're operating off is five batteries in total and you can operate with a full tank providing you have two batteries but if you have to fall back on one you have to go off half a tank so you can only go 20 litres per flight. Anything more than 20 litres per flight and the drone will throw up a warning saying it cannot take off, which is why we have to fix that level every now and then. Now, just for some clarification, the drone itself only takes two batteries at a time. Um, so you can't put three batteries in it, for example, or five. It only takes two or one. Two, you can operate a full tank. One, you can only operate half a tank. And by half a tank, I mean 20 litres. So it's just a bit below half a tank. Um, full tank is 55 litres, half a tank is technically 26, um, 27 litres, but to get it to take off with one battery only, the limit is 20 litres. Now, as you can see from these stunning shots, it's still early morning, so the sun's just starting to come up. And what I found through experience and being there so often that early in the morning is just after the sun comes up is normally when we get the majority of the interference. It's like it's a pulse from the sun and it actually 
can knock out your RTK, which is your GPS unit. Um, and it can also disconnect the drone from the controller and stuff like that. Um, but these, these drones, they're pretty smart now. There's a lot of AI technology built into them. Um, so even if they do get disconnected from the controller, um, they return home. The idea is they'll finish doing their runs exactly as planned, and then they will return home. Now, for anyone counting, basically the way it works is um, being a 38 hectare block, we should average between nine and 10 hectares an hour, depending on the speed that we're going. So this morning for this operation here, we were going flat out. So you're talking 13.8 meters a second. So it equates to about 55 kilometers an hour, I believe it is. Um, so they're, they're fairly hooking along. Um, and you can choose to run with obstacle avoidance turned on or turned off. If you have obstacle avoidance turned on, it can potentially be slower operations due to the drone actually picking up hollows in the cane. So if there's hollows in the cane or um, winch tracks, for example, the drone can potentially detect them as, a, as an obstacle and it'll actually slow down operations considerably. Um, so I always, I always work on that nine to 10 hectares an hour rate. That's for the P100 Pro. Um, you can potentially, like I say, get faster, so you can get 12 to 14 hectares an hour, um, but it all depends on the speed that you're operating and whether you're operating with obstacle avoidance turned off or on. Um, with these P100 Pro drones though, they're quite a hexy amount. You're talking anywhere from between 40 and $70,000 for a setup. Um, so my advice is, if, you've gonna, if you're gonna purchase one of these P100 Pro drones, keep obstacle avoidance on as much as possible. It's, um, it's not a sure thing though. It doesn't always pick up the obstacle. It's there as a redundancy. So if everything else fails, it should pick up the obstacle for you and stop you from losing your drone. You've got to remember, drones aren't tractors. They don't roll to a stop. They fall out of the sky and they smash to pieces. And I've seen anywhere from $2,000 worth of damage all the way up to $23,000 worth of damage. Now, I've also seen these drones broken in a few pieces and I've seen one drone broken in hundreds of pieces over 30 square meters. Um, it's a good practice not to get complacent with them either. Um, these drones can potentially be dangerous as well, of course. They are aircraft um, and they do have quite extensive props. I think one prop, prop by itself is a foot across. Um, so you're talking about two and a half feet across just for the blades themselves. So they are quite big machines. They weigh about 110 kilos all up. That's fully loaded. Um, so at their takeoff is when they're normally at their heaviest point and you're talking um, a total of about 110 kilos all up. Now, as you can see in this footage here, we are finally up to the last block. So I think that smaller block at the end there was five hectares in total. Um, and that's the way you have to manage these jobs. They've got to be manageable. Um, so you don't spray over the top of yourself as well. Um, there's no point going out there and operating the drone and getting covered in chem. Um, if you're doing that, you're not a very good operator, unfortunately. So it was time to move on. We'd finished that block. It took us roughly four hours. So uh, four to five hours with setup. So about four hours to spray the job. There's about half an hour setting up and half an hour packing up roughly, plus the time it takes to move about as well. Um, and you'd think that would be our day over and done with, but it's definitely not. Um, we shortly received a, a phone call and we were sent to another block. So basically, um, we were sent to do more ripening on the sugar cane um, and off we went. Within another hour, we were back up and operating. So we went to the new site, we done an assessment. Um, the field had already been mapped by the time we got there as well. Um, so it was just a matter of actually um, getting the gear back out, mixing our cam up, doing our, our checks on the drone and stuff like that to make sure that it was flying safely. Um, and then we set it off. Um, there's always a bit of paperwork involved and stuff like that as well. So you won't hear about that much from many other people. At some point, I hope to include a video on this channel in regards to the paperwork that's actually involved in flying drones. Um, you have to be CASA certified. So it's actually an aerial license 
in Australia, you have to be fully licensed to operate these machines. Um, and it's not just one license, it's a series of licenses. Um, so at some point um, over the next coming weeks, I hope to actually put together a video in regards to what's involved in actually getting your licenses to operate as a business or to be employed as a pilot to work for a drone company like myself. And that's it for today's video. I hope um, you got something of value out of this video. If you have, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. Um, I appreciate all the likes I can get. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Just put them down in the comment section below. Um, and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It certainly helps the algorithms um, put us to the top of the charts and stuff like that. Recommends us at least. I don't think I'm anywhere near tops of charts. I'm a long way from that. Um, but that's the dream. And that's it for today. Um, until next time, thank you very much. Cheers. Bye.